So rounding out our state schedule is our experience segment with our lovely segment chair, Adam Bezark. Uh, Adam has been in the business since he was knee-high to a grasshopper and now, <laughs> and now runs projects all over the world from his headquarters in Burbank with his team of little elves. Uh, please welcome Adam Bezark, one of my favorite people in the whole world. Oh, that is the that is the after lunch clap, isn't it? Whoa! It's, it's the, it's, uh, I'm so glad you guys are all here, and thank you for making it all the way to the second half of the second day of this epic uh, slog through knowledge. You guys are doing great. You should be saluted for everything you've done so far, and thank you for being part of this. So, um, it's it's been an interesting journey getting here. Uh, this, this has been a really fun year for us. You know, a lot of us worked on this project uh, on the last year's SAIT conference, and we had a, a great time. Uh, this is the experience segment, as you know, but uh, the, the, our working title for today is actually Curse You, Phil Hedema. Uh, <laughs> because, because Phil, Phil boned me, okay? So here, here's, what, here's, here's what's happening. Oh, you are here. Are you there? <laughs> are you? God, I hope he's here. Because, because, oh, there. Okay, good. Phew. Because Phil, com Phil completely snockered me. Because here's the deal. The, you know, we have these lovely four tracks: the the storytelling and and architecture and technology and experience tracks. And last year, the first year we all did this together, it was great. Uh, we had uh, I did the storytelling section. Uh, Al Cross, of course, did the the architecture. The the lovely M. K. Haley did technology, and Phil finished up with experience. It was great. We had a great time. So we sat down for our first meetings this year, and Phil sort of says, hey, hey, what do we think maybe we should switch this year? Maybe you and I could, you know, I'll, you take storytelling, and I'll do uh, experience, and you do experience. And I thought, oh, okay, that sounds fun. Biggest mistake ever. Worst, <laughs> dumbest thing I've ever done. I didn't realize it, but I got completely uh, horn-swoggled because, um, because of, of one simple reason, which is, uh, well, by the way, I, I noticed that um, Phil gets to be the mighty ringmaster. I'm the trained seal. So the, uh, I thought, I, so you're all in on it, right? Even the graphics guys are setting me up for this. But the, uh, the, the you know, when you con somebody, the whole, the whole trick to conning somebody is that you make it think it was their idea. So all week long, Phil's been saying, no, it was your idea, Adam. You suggested it. Oh, you sneaky bastard. Because... <laughs> Because the, 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 the trick is, it's, it's, this is not easy. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of get to it in a while. But it's, this, is, this is difficult. It's hard. It's weird. And, um, and Phil, the, oh, the, other, the other downside to being the experienced guy is I'm last. I've been sweating all the last two days. You guys haven't seen me. I haven't gotten to, to socialize or network or any of that stuff you're supposed to do. Phil was done at noon yesterday, and he has been chilling ever since <laughs> and having it so easy. <laughs> That's where I was last year, and now I've been like, I'm just a ball of sweat, so thanks, man. Um, but, the, um, the, the, but, but the problem is, it's not, just, it's not just that I got conned out of a couple of days' work. I got completely hosed because the, the, real, the real villainous side to this, the thing that was truly <laughs> evil about this, is, is that um, what, what Phil doesn't tell, didn't tell me is there's a problem. The problem is... The big problem is that, honestly, nobody knows what the hell experience is, right? We always talk about it. Nobody knows what it means. We use this word constantly, so constantly that it's become not even a real word. It's like, a, it's like, a, a, it's like an and or a the. It's an indefinite article or something. We use it so much that it's lost all meaning. And when, we got, when I got this assignment back in spring, I just was paralyzed because I didn't know what we were going to talk about. Because everything's an experience, right? Everything is an experience. And, and, and it, it's a, <laughs> right? And anything is an experience. I mean, if you look around, just around here, you'll find fantastic things that all call themselves experiences, including where we went on, uh, on Monday night, right? Everything is the karaoke experience. When, where do you draw the line? Why is, why is one thing an experience and another thing isn't? Or why does everything get to be? This has sort of been bugging me. I didn't really know 
what we were going to talk about here, and it has been pestering me for months. And so, the, um, the oh, by the way, he, apparently this is an experience, because he gets to do that, that's very nice. Um, my poor wayward son, who some of you have met, uh, identified an experience in the CVS on the way over here today. It is the talking refrigerator. Wait for it. Please come again. Say that. It's a, it's, a, it's a retail experience. Everything's a bloody experience. So how do we distinguish between experience and not experience, between what's good and what's bad? Why do we even have this name for this thing? It's so strange that we've done this. So that's what we kind of have been asking ourselves all along, and I'm going to ask you guys to think about uh, today. And our speakers today are actually not going to talk about that at all, but they're going to talk about, the, about the, the sort of the heart of experience as they understand it. And at the end of our session, we'll call up some friends from the audience and we'll, we'll try and see if we can put a definition on the word. If you go looking for it, it's really hard. There's, you can't find a decent definition for it. Um, if we look, let's see, um, yellow, there we go. If you, look, sort of, if you start scrolling around in, on the internets, you'll find... Um, a religious experience, that's, a, that's an experience, that's very nice. There's this little chart down here I thought was uh, interesting. Well, maybe that'll teach us. It says, design better experiences. Oh my God, what the hell is that? This is some strange, complex thing about, it winds up being about designing communications programming or something like that. So that's, that's not helping. If you, um, if you keep scrolling down, it just gets sicker and weirder and denser as you go. So uh, we have to be, we have to figure out how to, how to define this, let's see. Um, oh, this is how I felt after, after searching for a little while. That guy up in the corner there, yeah, that, that's experience. So I said, all right, fine. Well, if I can't find it in Google Images, we'll go the old-fashioned route, we'll, we'll look it up in the dictionary, but of course, now we're all too lazy to go to a real dictionary, so I looked it up on my Mac. I can see if we can find, there it is. The dictionary says a couple of different things. It's uh, practical contact with and observation of facts or events, uh, okay. Great, I got to see something. Um, it is uh, the knowledge or skill acquired by experience over a period of time. Uh, that's just like work experience, okay. Um, an event or occurrence that leaves an impression on someone. Closer, maybe that's what we're talking about when we say an experience, something that actually affects us. Or maybe it's this last one, an emotion, right? An opportunity to experience the, the to experience the excitement of New York. So if it's if we're talking about something that uh, that leaves an impression on you and makes an emotion, I guess that's what we are looking for in experience. And I think that's what we're going to try and delve into a little bit today. So that's kind of what we're trying to do. And by the way, it, the other thing you notice is that if you start um, if you take the word experience and put another word in front of it the job gets a little bit easier. So retail experience, if you type that in, now you start getting images that have some meaning and that are interesting to us that we can start to talk about. Or if we talk about dining experience, then you start getting fun things like that. I don't know what that is, but I want to eat there. I don't know who those ladies are. I do not want to eat there. And you know, that, all these images come up in your first Google search for, for dining experience. So now that has some meaning. And if you type immersive experience, aha, now we're getting to the stuff that we're really into. And so uh, a couple of our speakers today are going to talk about interactive and immersive experiences and give us a sense of, of how, you, how you come at that stuff. Um, so that's, this one is particularly cool. I don't know what that is, but I want to go there. Uh, I think it's, I don't know if you know if it's real, but I hope it is. Um, so, so we're, so putting other words in front of experience is something that helps us define it better, and let's try and do that. Let's try and be more specific as we talk about experiences in ways that mean something. Uh, so finally, like yesterday, as we all got here for the uh, for the conference, I saw Pat Gallegos. Are you here, Pat, in the, in the audience? And Pat said, oh, didn't you know, when we started the SAIT conference, because Pat's a veteran of this thing, it, it was storytelling plus architecture plus technology equals experience. So, So really, I suppose you could say experience is the sum total of, of all of these things, and that's why we put it at the end of the day. Let's see if we can figure that out as we go along.